Paul Bartman. I'm the founder and director of the Yellow Barn Studio in Glen Echo. And today we are going to be looking at the uh, annual high school art exhibition that is sponsored by the Friends of the Yellow Barn. Each year, high school students in the Washington area have a chance to submit work and to win awards. We have some really outstanding awards of a $500 first place award, a $250 second place award, and a, uh, a third place award of $100. Uh, the first place award uh, is sponsored by Plaza Artist Materials. The second place award is uh, sponsored by Jack Fuller in memory of Mitzi Yader Fuller. So today we have our judge and we're gonna talk to her about the uh, submissions and uh, you know why she chose the work and what she thought of the show. So today we have Ann Schlesinger, all right? Ann is one of our instructors at the Yellow Barn. She is also a adjunct professor at uh, Georgetown University. And she has taught uh, at a number of schools in the area, including American University, Maryland, and Northern Virginia Community College, as well as the Smithsonian. She holds a BA degree from uh, the University of Virginia and a MFA from American University. She uh, did her postgraduate study at the Fine Arts Academy in Munich, Germany, and her awards include a Fulbright Scholarship in Painting, the Annette Cade Fine Arts Fellowship, and the David Lloyd Krieger Award, and the Art Prize from UVA. So with that, I want to welcome Anne, and uh, hi, Anne, how are you? Oh, hi, Walt, just fine. It's such a great, uh, it's so great to see you today and to have you as our judge. I know that you bring, uh, you know, outstanding credentials. Anybody that uh, knows you in the Washington area, Anne stands out as one of the most outstanding uh, art uh, artists in Washington. And she teaches at the Yellow Barn. She has a number of uh, classes that she's teaching. And uh, so we selected her this year to be our judge. So Anne, uh, I'm going to... Um, share the screen now, and perhaps maybe you can talk a little bit about the, um, uh, the high school show, if you don't mind. Uh, you should be seeing it now. Do you see it? Friends of the Old Barn uh, yes. website? Yes, I okay. do. All right, so we're going to um, scroll down, and uh, this is the 23rd annual uh, juried virtual high school art exhibition. So we're gonna take a look at the show now. And, um, and you can make some comments uh, as to the, uh, um, you know, your, your picks. As I mentioned, uh, you know, it's, it's the 23rd annual show. So we've been doing this for quite a while and you can see the first place award, second place award and third place award. I think the, uh, but besides that, there are 37 other students who are selected for the show. They all get $25 gift, dollar gift certificates from Plaza Artist Materials. And Plaza is a really big sponsor of a lot of our competitions. So with that, um, you know, the information is on the website, friends at the yellowbarnstudio.org. And uh, this is the winner's gallery. So, Ann, we're gonna start with first place. Uh, by Amari Lawson. Uh, it's from the Waldorf School. Um, her teacher is Barbara Bancroft. Um, Anne, do you want to make any comments? Well, first of all, I'd like to say, Walt, that uh, thank you very much for allowing me the opportunity to be the juror of this incredibly outstanding group of young artists. I was so amazed uh, by the level of uh, just the level of technique and just the aesthetic development of all of these artists. And I even showed, I showed people in my family and I even showed uh, some of the people that I taught at Yellow Barn and everyone was amazed that these were actually high school students. So I want to say that the, the level of, uh, the level of work was incredibly high and it was really difficult to actually uh, choose the pieces to go in. Um, I, and then, to choose who should get first prize, second prize, third prize, and then some honorable mentions. First of all, I thought this was an incredible portrait. There were, there were, I would like to say that there were so many good portraits, 
Uh, but this one, I think that it, it really captured me. I was amazed at, first of all, at the qualities of the tonal tones within the skin colors, the, the capturing of the personality, the seriousness of the, um, the approach which, uh, of the artist. And also, just, just from a practical point of view, it's very hard to paint people in glasses. I thought that <laughs> the glasses were handled in quite masterfully. Um, but also just the way that the uh, tones were broken up, like within the, the um, actual portrait, the, also the colors on the shirt, the tones on the shirt, and even the background, the handling of the background, the negative space, there's a beautiful sense to the quality of the paint wonderful textures, wonderful uh, surface quality, and just the variation within these large color areas. So um, I think it's a, an incredible portrait. Yeah, I, um, do. I do too. I'm, I'm really uh, impressed by this particular painting, for sure. And anybody who, like I've taught, I've taught uh, drawing and painting at all different levels and at the college level, it is so hard to capture, to learn how to paint the nose, the mouth, the ears, and to put it on a neck that actually holds up the head. It is so difficult that most people can't appreciate how difficult, there are so many uh, aspects to this painting uh, that I was really amazed by. So, I mean, even if you look at the tones in the shirt, like changing from the pinkish tones on the left side, gradually shifting over to the uh, sort of grayish blue tones on the right side, and then the background. Notice, you might not notice this, but he's actually, or uh, the, the, the background of this person, on the left side, it's dark, and on the right side, it's light. And that's really very sophisticated. You'll see that the great artists, you know, um, if you look at Cezanne or Pissarro or Monet, uh, Monet, they, they would do this, Matisse, they would sort of shift the tones of the background because the background or negative space, you might say, is really a very active part of the composition. So anyway, I, I, I was very amazed by this painting. Yeah, this is a, a truly a good one. And um, I can see why you chose it. Uh, the next one. Uh, the next one. Um, this, is, let me say this. It's okay. by Catherine Yoon, and it's uh, from Holton Arms, and the teacher's Ben Ferry. Yes, um, I thought that, first of all, the uh, one thing in art that lots of times we talk about is art having a social or um, a social commentary, and I thought it was a really good one. And it was handled in a very interesting way. Plastic ashore. This is a serious environmental problem. But on top of it, the fish are handled incredibly. They there is such variation in the fish, and also in all of the junk that is around the fish. And there's it's it's very difficult to do that. Painting junk is really hard. Okay, <laughs> drawing junk, um, but also. If you look at um, the textures in the drawing and the amount of contrast, beautiful uh, variation from darks to lights, it's really great. Uh, beautiful handling of line and texture. And the fish are handled so that they look believable. Lots of times fish, it's, you can make them and they can look kind of cartoony or um, uh, kind of uh, like it's people draw their idea of a fish. These look like rotting fishes. So I thought it was a really good drawing. So yeah, this is this worked out well. I, I, I'm impressed with it too. And you know, the way the fish all sit on top of one another, uh, and you can kind of feel their weight too, is really quite, quite interesting, really nicely done. And then the third one, this is called Frozen in Time. It's by Marissa uh, Kako. And uh, she's from Albert Einstein and her uh, teachers, um, Midge and Jeanette um, Harris. Yes, this one, um, 
once again, an amazing handling of paint. Um, uh, when, I, when I teach drawing, we always work on after the students have been developing for a while. Uh, later in the semester, we usually try uh, reflections and transparency and we draw metal and glass. But it is very hard to convey uh, the quality of light that is reflected from those pieces and the sense of transparency through the glass is really um, uh, very skillful, incredibly skillful. And I just thought it's a nice composition. Um, it's, it's a large painting, so it must have taken a very long time. But if you look at the way that the it looks like a silver, uh, maybe a coffee holder um, on the left is painted great reflections on that and then the this wine jug with a it's you can see this greenish tone through the the glass and wonderful reflections on it and even the uh, lantern it's the the drapery is handled nicely the it looks very silky it's it's got a lot of reflections all of those are difficult to do and do it convincingly yeah, this one, uh, you, you, you hit the nail on the head. It, it sure is convincing, isn't it? I mean, it really uh, is, is so masterfully done, so impressive. Um, and the, um, the design and the color all work so well together. So um, I could see the, the top three pieces, your choice, uh, your choices. These are all truly uh, outstanding works. Uh, the next one is an honorable mention. You gave a number of honorable mentions. This one is uh, from Tarina Amarlikit, I believe, uh, from uh, Winston Churchill, and her teacher is Dana Mooney. Yes, this one, I was impressed with this one. First of all, the drawing, um, the skills in drawing are very good. Uh, you can see the handling of the the father with the suit. The the fabric has wrinkles across it. The sense of light coming from one direction, nice sense of light. And then uh, the woman, I suppose it's the mother, uh, with her hands up to her face. And then they have a teddy bear. I didn't really understand this. I didn't understand it. It was a very uh, an enigmatic piece, you could say, because of. Uh, the content, but I also very much like the handling of using cardboard, tearing out the cardboard and create getting the corrugated surface on the inside, and then even the the little teddy bear is very cute in it. Um, it's it's handled in a very nice way. It's all once again believable. Hands, there's three sets of hands here, and hands, as you know, Walt. Hands are another thing that people have are very difficult to do in a convincing manner and to have them be expressive at the same time. Yeah, this is, a, you know, the, the fascinating uh, thing here, too, for me, is the, uh, the quality of the drawing and how masterfully that's done. It, uh, quite a nice piece, beautiful piece. All right. So then the next one. Uh, this is a blue tea by Jad Jad Jadot, okay, uh, from Washington Waldorf School, uh, teacher Barbara Bancroft. Yeah, once again, I thought beautifully handled portrait. And I'm impressed that they're doing serious portraiture at the Waldorf School. At a number of schools, there was, um, there were um, portraits from a number of schools, and I was impressed with them because the portrait is a very important part of um, the tradition of painting, but also it's easy to be, uh, what is the word, self, uh, too self-conscious. In, in the portraits that I chose, the person is direct, but there's nothing silly about it. There's nothing gimmicky about it. It's very direct, um, strong observation, strong sense of light, you can sense the skull in this figure. Um, you have light coming from both directions. You have a strongly lit on one side and maybe a window or something on the other side that's slightly opening up that right side. Uh, the neck is handled nicely. So I was very impressed with this piece also. 
Yeah, a beautiful uh, rendering. And I think, you know, one of the uh, interesting things about the way the, um, uh, the artist handled this is that both of those portraits have such a believable feeling to them. Mm -hmm. I, I think that they really feel quite natural. So then the next one is uh, Onion. And again, uh, this is Sameo Meyer, and um, uh, it's from uh, Washington Waldorf School and teacher Barbara Bancroft. Yeah, once again, another amazing painting. I loved, I loved the simplicity of this and that this painting, it's got a beautiful sense of color. It's a strong study in tones, in light and shadow. There's a dramatic sense and, and it's a very modest subject matter, very simple. It's just a single onion, but the skin is coming off and um, the shadows that are created from the actual, um, from the actual painting, um, the viewpoint is, are really add a lot to it. So it's got a very nice composition. Uh, the shadows sort of frame that, that um, onion along with the piece of skin that's falling to the side, almost like hands holding it. And it's got incredible texture in it. It's, um, and it's very understated. It's just, I would say it's just good, solid painting. And I love to see that. Um, it, 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 that's what I would say about it. I, I think that I'm very impressed once again with the level of this. Yeah, uh, very sophisticated piece when you look at the textures, especially the way they they play against one another, the beautiful wall that's behind the, uh, the piece and how active it is, is really quite interesting. Well done. And then the, the next one is Nurture, another honorable mention. This is uh, Olivia Ensign and uh, teachers Mijanette uh, Harris from Albert Einstein High School uh, and Sarah Harnish both teachers. Yeah, I, I just thought I liked the, the directness of this piece. Um, there's something about it that is arresting. It, it attracted my attention for some reason. Sometimes it's hard for me to even say what it is about a piece that draws me to it. But once again, it's everything is handled in a very um, skillful manner. And it's very understated. Sometimes um, pieces when they're understated can be more powerful. Uh, it, it makes you, you wonder, what is she thinking about? What, what exactly is this painting about? It's called nurture, but you barely see the eyes of the person and it's very simplified in terms of the t-shirt. So I just like, like the painting. Yeah. Again, a very natural one, you mm -hmm. know, very natural. it doesn't feel like it's posed. Right. Okay, so then the next one is uh, Mo uh, Monarch uh, Sonomian by uh, Abiola uh, Adele. And um, that's from uh, Thomas Luton and teacher Quan Dong. Yeah, once again, um, beautiful handling of a, the portrait. Um, I don't know if you always every year, whether they get so many portraits, but I was amazed by just the ability of these high school students to um, to capture in a very serious way uh, uh, the presence, the character of um, the people that were painted. And I just think also this one has a beautiful handling of the drapery and the way that it's turned, but the, the lighting on the figure, the lighting on the skin is really nice and very subtle. Once again, all of these are subtle. The handling, the background, it's barely blue, but that blue sort of sets off. It's nice and a kind of a cool, neutral, kind of a slightly cool blue background that sort of sets off the, um, the warm tones of the skin. And another uh, special one, particularly, I, I think, it, it, you know, really attracts me is that aerial view or looking up at the at the sky, not an aerial view, but an ascending order that's, that's here, transcendent, you know, has a nice feel to it. And, and, and I didn't, I didn't understand what the name, sometimes I look at the name and I wondered if it's about monarch bu butterflies, but I'm, I'm not sure at all. Yeah, so. it's a hard one. 
or in a hard one to pronounce. Yeah. Um, so anyhow, so here is snapshot. That's easy to pronounce. All right. Um, um, Mor Moria uh, Leite. That, and, now is that, that is not, um, is that an honorable mention? I don't think no. so. Okay. So this is not an honorable mention. So, so, so these, these are, are just, these, yeah. yeah, these are not award winners. These are just um, works that are in the show. And um, so we're just going to go down through them so that the group uh, who's watching can um, see uh, the quality of the work, where mm -hmm. the work is coming from. And if you see a piece that you want to interject anything uh, on, you're certainly welcome to. But I think we're going to just go ahead through them now so that everybody sees the quality of the work. I know there were over 150 entries, if I'm not mistaken. Do you know how many entries you judged? Uh, I think it was 156. 156, of which we could only take 40. Yeah, so, it was, and it was, I would say, Walt, it was very difficult. And I spent, I went over it many, many times because it was very hard for me to make these selections. Uh, the, the quality was incredible. and. I'm very impressed with the high school students around here. What uh, what uh, what did you see? You know, from the standpoint of uh, the work that you stood out, generally speaking. Well, first the technical ability of the students, the ability to render, uh, to capture, for example, in this piece, um, uh, the previous piece, you could see the uh, just the reflections in the um, in the uh, the water, but also there's so much that is captured in this. It's not like to paint a house with the correct perspective, and this is almost straight on. It's slightly tilted, but you can get a little bit of that roof, and to capture uh, this this house that's on um, I don't know what you call the it's on stilts. But to capture the, the, the sky, all of these things take a lot of observation and a lot of understanding about color. So, um, and then the drawings, I was impressed that the students composed very well. Um, a composition is very difficult to make it so that, that we are, I, I always uh, it's to say you have to put, make it so that for some reason, um, we can't escape what our eye just keeps being led around. And when you go get down to one end, something draws your attention, shoots your attention somewhere else. So there, I was just very um, moved by all of these. I, and I thought the ideas behind the works were very interesting. Yeah, they're color palettes too, the way they use color. Oh and yeah, color, very sophisticated. Yeah, such a variety of different ways. Um, yeah, you know, we we at the Yellow Barn and the Friends of the Yellow Barn really look forward to this exhibit because uh, these are this is the future of the arts, you know, and the future of the arts in our area. And I think that when we look at the, these artists here, a lot of them will go on and make a career in art. And I think uh, you can see why. I mean, there really is some uh, outstanding works, and I I just feel, um, you know. Uh, we're lucky to be able to do this for, uh, you know, our community. So you can see what exactly is going on in uh, the high schools as far as the art programs are concerned. So with that, I think we've run, uh, uh, we went through the awards. Uh, so I'm going to stop sharing here now and come back to you, Anne. And, uh, and thank you. I know this was a lot for you to have to do. So, um, you know, and, you know, I couldn't ask for a better juror. So I really think that the students were lucky to have uh, someone who really is, understands painting and drawing and uh, has a great eye for color. And I think that, uh, you know, if anything, uh, you know, the works that we see in the show are truly uh, outstanding. So I really appreciate what you've done by picking this show. Okay. Well, I was, I was, um, first and foremost, uh, so impressed. I, I'm impressed with the quality, the level of work, the seriousness that all the artists showed. But also I, I was honored, thank you to Walt and to the Friends of the Yellow Barn for allowing me 
the opportunity to see what's going on in the high schools. I, I'm very happy. It's great to see all this. So, yeah, it is, isn't it? It really uh, makes you uh, aware of the great uh, work that the teachers do with their students and how impressive it is. Well, with that, Anne, I'm going to say uh, goodbye. And um, for the those of you that are out there watching this video, um, you know, we have a, another year of uh, awards coming up. We're going to have another show. It'll be the 24th annual um, Friends of the Yellow Barn High School show uh, next March. So put that on your calendar. And whenever you're in Glen Echo, just stop in and say hi. Well, thank you, Ann. And I'll say good night now. Well, thank you, Walt. All right. And congratulations to all the uh, people who got into the show. And I wish we could have had more. I yeah, wish that there a, was more space. So That's so true. All right. Thank you. And uh, so long. Okay. Bye-bye.